everyone, I'm Kayla June and I'm the developer of Somatic Groundwork and that's the class that I'm offering here today. Hey, I just got over COVID-19 or at least I'm in the recovery place now I'm about in my third week and um, I'm really thankful that I had what would be considered a mild infection. I know that people have really, really suffered um, to, with, with, with this virus. So I'm offering this class um, if you also are recovering from COVID-19 or if you're recovering from any other kind of cold or virus or you're recovering from life, um, something's going on and you can really feel that your nervous system is frazzled, your body's not feeling that great, your mind is cloudy, you're also feeling low energy, maybe you feel depleted or kind of have that collapsed uh, type state and you're looking for the just right thing to do to help you get a little bit more resource to develop a little bit more capacity without also kind of like taxing your body more than it already is because you know you need all of that goodness to to help you to help you feel better and and to recover so i have an online practice space it's called the somatic groundwork online practice space and um, i haven't taught in it live for about a month normally i do and you can you can check out the practice space if you want to have more access to uh, somatic groundwork I wanted to offer this particular class also here though publicly on my YouTube channel. Um, I just I just taught this in, in the practice space and specifically for again recovering from COVID-19 and, and all of the other things. This practice is going to be great for helping you get some harmony in your nervous system. It's also really good for our fascial matrix. And so when we're talking about those kinds of symptoms, like I definitely experienced um, body pain and fatigue as two, as my, two of my biggest symptoms. Um, we, need, we need to have like this way to, to work with our fascia again in the just right way and somatic groundwork is definitely it. And this class is really focused for this kind of low effort, gentle mobility, and also deep recovery. So let me know how this class lands for you. And I hope that it's really good medicine Thanks for joining me. Okay, so let's settle into the floor. Remember that anything that I guide here in the online practice space is a recommendation or an opportunity. I encourage you to listen to what arises for you. And if that's something different than what I'm guiding, please follow your impulses. That's really what we're doing here in the practice is coming into the intimacy of our experience in the here and now. Learning about how to participate with the 10,000 things. While moving into that one spaciousness. The ever infinite now. Bones, bones falling into the earth. Toe bones, heel bones, sacrum bones, hip bones, spinal bones, shoulder bones, knuckle bones. Elbow bones, skull bones. Noticing the weight and the gravity of bones. Deepening contact into the floor beneath you. Into your mat or your carpet or your wood floor. And transitioning your imagination to the floor beneath you being something that's alive. Maybe it's grass or sand, a field of flowers, soil, water. Depending on what you're merging into, there's a way that your bones will also change their response. Our bones sinking, 
our bones floating. Noticing where your feet are connecting into this live field, into your floor. Right foot, left foot, right leg, left leg. Noticing the weight or the buoyancy now of pelvis. Tracking now up to the area behind your lungs and heart, rib case, shoulder blades, heavy arms. And this balancing place of your skull. Allowing for a few open mouth exhales here. And on each of those exhales, seeing if you can bring your awareness now to feet and pelvis and rib case and head all at once. Exhale, emerging down, a widening, a spreading, a distributing of you out and across the field that you're in. Inhaling through the nose, open mouth, exhale. A few more times like that. And as you're quieting, if your body has impulses for moving, little twitches, uh, reaches, little twists, maybe some pushes, some spirals. All those little subtle animations, allowing them to percolate through your landscape. When you're ready, bring a lightweight rhythmic rock in through your feet. This can be very, very quiet. Maybe there's not a lot of movement that moves through you. Or you can really sense all of the different little parts of you and really release kind of the spaces between all those parts and allow a lot of movement to flow through you like a wild river but yet at the same time, you're a calm lake, a wild river and a calm lake. What's that like? Maybe four or five breaths with your rock and then come to stillness. Now I'm feeling the flood of sensation when you do end your rocking. If your eyes were closed, opening them for a moment and really taking in the environment around you. Really landing yourself in the place that you are. Softening the globes around your eyes and the space between your ears. Beginning to track the inhale of your breath, moving into expansion breath now, nose 
There's a place where the air enters here. See if you can follow the path through the inner spaces of your sinuses, down into your throat. Noticing the shape shifting of your center body. This movement is subtle, but make sure there's movement. So depending on your day, you might have some kind of over bracing and over holding, too much resistance around your center body. Let your inhale start to move things. Move things out to the front, move things into your back, move things down and around, move things right and move things left. Placing your hands on your body to notice this movement from your own feeling sense. The widening of your rib cage, the rising of your belly. Expansion balloon-like quality of, of your torso. Ah, allowing sound to arise through your exhale. Making space, clearing out. And now connecting your exhale with this connection into your field as you did through feet and pelvis and rib cage and skull. The buoyancy you might feel if you're floating in water, the sinking you might have if you're moving down into sand. Connecting your exhale with this spreading and distribution of you into the field around you. And on your next inhale, allow this balloon-like buoyancy through your front body to move your spine to where you roll your spine down towards your tail, down to the south of you. And a low back arcing happens here. So some space between your spine and the floor occurs here as you balloon out and away from the earth. And then on your exhale, this rolling point of contact as you move up towards your waistline to the north of you, Allowing everything to melt down towards the floor now. Low back melts and connects into the ground. So allowing your breath to move your spine. Inhale, initiate this rocking down to the south, more towards your tail. You'll feel more weight there. Your low back is released away from the floor. Exhale, indulging in that quality of spreading through the earth, rolling point of contact up towards your waist. See if you can find the right tempo here to where your breathing and the movement of your spine can really work together in partnership. Wide open contact through the soles of your feet. Your head will rock here too. So the rhythm of your pelvis rocking between the south and the north or the, the tail and the waist. This will also be happening in your skull. You might notice your chin moving up towards the ceiling, eyes moving back behind you a little bit, and chin moving down towards your body, eyes moving down a little bit. 
See if you can get these two wheels to work together now. Breath influencing both of them. And if you'd like, you might want to imagine right into the cerebrospinal fluid that's flowing around your brain, bathing the spinal column all the way down to your tail. Sacrum to cranium. A gentle rocking of the fluids through you. Letting that come to stillness when you're ready. And again, noticing if there's any micro movements that like to be animated through you. The twists, the spirals, the little pushes, the reaches, the squeeze, expanding pendiculations. <sighs> And perhaps inviting another rhythmic rock here. So that's what I'm going into. Now breathing in and out through your nose as you're rocking. So let your breath be this kind of sort of wind inside of your rocking. See if you can get your pelvis to rock like a boat in the water, your head's rocking like a boat in the water, jaw. Rocking. All these little tiny movements, all these little tiny webs threading through one another in the rock. Mm. And coming to stillness, finding the centering of your boat, both in your pelvis and in your skull. So a balancing place, a place where you can feel some kind of continuity between all of your bony places, but now you're also noticing the greater volume of you organized from your feet all the way up to your head. Now keep your left foot grounded. See if you can keep your left leg and hip in the place that they are. So it's like a standing leg. So you might put a little bit of energy there in order to maintain or constrain the shape that it's in. And from that stability then, let your right knee open and your right hip move. And then right knee comes back to where it started. So this is like an opening of a door opening. You move to the edge of your right foot, pinky side, and then you roll back up to where you started, full foot on the floor. Maybe you think about it as a wagging of your knee in space, back and forth, in and out. And noticing the available range that you have in this hip when you're really constraining or stabilizing the left side. Really looking for full freedom of the right side. And then quickening that tempo a little bit. So there's a fluid like flow, an opening, an easy rebound comes back up. Kind of like a domino, it might kind of move into your left leg, then bounce back out. So there's a little bit of an elastic quality here. Noticing that rolling point of contact across the sole of your foot from the pinky side, across the arches to the big toe side and back again. Now the next time it goes out, allow that knee to go all the way to the floor or to wherever it might land and let your left hip actually move then. So my left hip came out of the floor. My left leg is foot is still on the floor. And then bring that right leg back up. So now right knee drops all the way to the floor. Let it pour all the way out. 
And now let that movement influence your pelvis. Really subtle rotation here in the pelvis as you let your left hip move. So you're coming out of the constraint of holding it with the ground. And there begins to be this whole rocking now of both hips in a way and your pelvis. And allow the freedom of this rock to do what it will. Let this get a little messy. One piece moving the next piece. How one leg is connected into the other leg through the pelvis, through your back. And full body star, distal reach before we do the other side. Fingers reach overhead, toes reach below. Organizing everything into your navel. Kind of a stretchy rubber bandy type moment here, allowing things to shift. Maybe move through your shoulders a little bit, rock through your pelvis a little bit. Maybe there's a pendiculation there. Okay, and I'm back into standing feet or constructive rest position. Now I'm organizing my right foot, leg, hip to stay in this stable position. So right hip with the floor and left knee falls out, wags out, left knee wags in. This is a very simple joint mobilization here where only the left hip is moving. Then we have this great way though to also track relationship of foot on the floor and how we're receiving the floor through our foot. Check in with your breathing here, make sure it's still flowing. If you've noticed you've come back into a bracing or a kind of an overholding place, pause for a moment, reconnect back to your body, breathing you, and then begin moving through your hip again. And just quickening that tempo a little bit. Again, trying to find that kind of elasticity, the rebounding on either side as you wag the knee. And then eventually let that leg pour all the way to the floor and then your opposite hip is gonna come up. So it's gonna influence a movement of your pelvis and then returning it back. So that knee now goes all the way down. And we have this rolling point of contact essentially now between our right and our left side through our low back. But influenced by the motion of your hip moving. And this time when that leg goes to the floor, extend the leg, allow yourself to roll to your belly for a minute. Let's just get another surface on the floor here. You might wanna settle and yield here. I'm gonna rock a little bit. Feels really good in my gut, actually. So I'm just rocking from side to side across my belly. I'm taking my eyes on a little journey around me too. Some orienting here. That work we can do with our vestibular system. Simply by moving our head and our spine in this position. And then when you're ready, coming back to your constructive rest position again. Okay, so knee drop now. So we've got some good mobility going. I'm dropping to the right side. I'm gonna lead with my right leg dropping out and the left leg's gonna follow and then returning back to center. Easy, easy. So we're looking for low effort here. Trying to get all of that proprioceptive feedback from the floor, not only through our feet now, but also through our, like the lumbar spine right across the sacrum. If your lower body was a sandbag, you don't miss any moment of contact as your knees drop and as you return back to center. 
And I'm going to go to the other side now. So that was to my right. I'm going left. And how many pieces can you get moving here? So you want your each hip to be moving independently in its own rhythm. Imagine your pelvis is in at least two parts, if not three or four. All this kind of micro sequencing that can happen here. So we have the benefit of doing some self chiropractic work. Now I'm going to go back and forth. So I'm going to go to the right, up and over the top, to the left. You can start to play with this rhythm here a little bit too. So I'm kind of allowing one knee to, so I go knee drop, for example. I'm going to have my lower leg stay there. My upper leg's going to come across and literally pull the other side across. And I get this kind of easy tensioning across the inner thigh area, which is a good feeling for me right now. All right, and then with this knee drop, what happens with uh, what you, like when both legs fall to the side and you put a little bridge in the top, okay? So it's like an easy drop and then a push through the top leg, you push the floor away, release it, drop to the other side, small bridge. So you're getting some easy hip extension there, right? So low effort, oh, and then there's some more effort in the push and then release the effort, fall to the other side, a little bit of effort. And if your arms are in a high Y while you do this, you could allow that push to sequence up across your torso, through your shoulder, and give you a little rotation up through your spine to where your arm bone also might rotate in that diagonal pathway. Notice how you can choose Again, this is a, a matter of playing with force distribution. You can choose the speed, you can choose the quality, how this moves through you. You can linger in one kind of area or another if you chose to. Or kind of pausing at some point along the way. Just kind of hang in this for uh, a minute or so and see what arises for you as a good practice. If you have knee drop and all of the half rolls and circles in your practice, you, you might find that you want to move into those patterns. Or you may want to stay kind of more in this smaller range. And keep exploring the push into rotation of your arm above you. And finally, you could get into deep volume by really working with the, the push and that force and how it moves through your pelvis and kind of like, uh, yeah, in around your lower viscera. Oh, there's a lot of sensation that we get also through the thoracolumbar fascia, which is essentially our whole back. Um, if you can visualize a, a muscle chart, it's that big white diamond that you would see connecting the pelvis into the spine, up into the arm. So as you start to integrate your arm into this, for example, and you get into this rotation, you're directly accessing into that area. So you might want to get especially curious about the sensations through your back body and move, move with the sensations that you feel there. You can pull and push in different ways. And then we have this wonderful way that we're rolling back and forth across the floor. So we're getting all this love from the ground. So it's this real combination of proprioception and interoception and partnership here. Such good medicine.
Okay, I'm gonna move out into another star reach here, toes down, fingers up. And on my exhale, I'm gonna come into a little ball. Feels like a good integration place after what we just did. If you wanna use your breath here, it'd be inhale, reaching out and away from your navel. Exhale, everything organizes into this little seed on your back. This auxetic property of our tissues, we can play with a kind of a global pattern here with this star seed or corded distal. <sighs> Maybe four to six times. And then finding yourself back into constructive rest position, maybe a rhythmic rock, maybe into a moment of stillness. Okay, so two feet on the ground here. Let's do a few bridges. So pushing feet into the ground. Don't let anything move quite yet. Just feel the tensioning. Push feet into the ground. Notice what happens in your lower legs. Notice what happens in your thighs. How is this transferring then up through your center? And can you do this without shifting your pelvic boat? Okay, so you wanna keep that centering place so you can allow that to move then up towards your diaphragm, really a good visualization. And then release. So do a push. I think it curious about what's happening in your inner body with the push and then let that push completely go. Feel that release back into floor. Do that back and forth a few times. So you're really studying this kind of subtle level of effort before your body moves. And then when you're ready, allowing movement to happen into this bridge. So the push then does send your pelvis away from the floor. You could go up an inch and hover. You could slowly make your way to your full range today or anything in between. The first few, if you do go all the way up to your full range or when you do, spend a little time at the top. Again, studying kind of this force distribution from feet through your body. Now you might be able to take that all the way to shoulders and even up into throat and jaw. And the easy fold through your hips brings you back down to the floor. The bridge practice here, mini or mighty. Studying the balance of forces between your right and your left side. Are you favoring one side over the other? Keeping your breath moving. Let's add a rotation into this bridge. So from your top range, wherever that is, dropping one hip down towards the floor. It's almost like you're pouring out, for example, through your right side. Maybe then that right side touches the ground. Maybe it doesn't. Pushing back up, balanced bridge in the top. Pour out the other side for me, that left side coming down, big and mighty twist. So push and twist. And doing that six to eight times, taking a rest, and do that a few times. Keeping easy through your chest and shoulders, jaw, throat.
And when you're done with that, invitation here for another rhythmic rock or pelvic clocks could also be a good one. You could also include the full circling, not just north and south, but also right and left. When you come to stillness, taking a few breaths here in this place of quiet, moment of integration for your brain. All right, and right leg. So left leg, we're gonna go back to having this kind of stability and constraint with the left foot and left hip and easy mobility in your right side, except for now it's gonna be through the direction of the thigh lift. So before we are wagging knee in and out, this time knee comes back towards your face and then foot drops to the floor. But again, it's this question of like, how can you give as much freedom of movement to your right side as possible to express this hip folding and unfolding. Choosing how you're using your breath with the movement. You could pair them in rhythm if you wanted to, or they could each have their own rhythm, but they're both moving. So neither one is restricted or held. How can both have just this kind of like organicity to it. And I'm moving to the other side. I really love this change where the mobile leg becomes the stable leg and the stable leg becomes the mobile leg. So you might get interested in that too as you switch to the other side. And then once you've done each side, alternate. So a right lift, drop, a left lift, drop. And how can you really allow your natural fold to occur here? So maybe it moves out to the side a little bit. Maybe there's some rotation in it. Like how does your natural hip fold wanna be expressed here? Where do you get the biggest freedom of motion? and then taking a rest from that. We're gonna add a little swing phrase here. So I'm gonna to go to the right side. It's gonna be a thigh lift. And then as the leg drops down, I'm gonna slide my foot out and away. Leg extends and I'm gonna kick my leg up and then drop my leg. So it's a thigh lift, slide, leg swing, drop. Thigh lift, slide, leg swing, drop. Find the tempo that works for you. You don't wanna to go too slow here because you wanna be able to use some momentum. We also don't wanna go faster than you can track each of these delicious moments. And about eight times before you switch sides. Hmm. How do you partner with gravity here? I'm going to take a, just a very short rest after that, noticing the sensations, how they're different now in my right side than my left. And left side, so thigh lift, slide, leg swing, drop.
And then allowing for another pause after you're done with that leg. Okay, so for our arm, I'm actually gonna start with my left arm. So arms are, my arms are out to the side. I'm gonna take my left fingertips. I'm gonna arc them overhead. So I'm drawing a circle overhead. I'm gonna keep drawing this circle until it moves across my body and I come up to kind of a prop position on both hands. And then I'm gonna fold myself back down. It's a reaching of the arm back overhead. And I come back to constructive rest. Right arm, fingertips reach over. Now, as I'm reaching my right arm over, my left arm is folding in. It's gonna make the easiest transition. And that way my eyes can just keep following the reach of my hand and I roll up and I've got two palms to push away from. And then as I come back to the floor, I can fold into the arm that's closest to the floor. Eyes follow that reach now overhead and I'm back to where I started. There's also work and support happening with your feet here. This is really a full body movement. We're initiating this with the arm. Again, if you go too slow here, you're gonna miss out on some of the momentum opportunities. So find that right tempo just a few times here. You also wanna make sure that you can, you know, track this with your eyes. You don't wanna go faster than what your body can really come up, um, I guess, organize, integrate. So whenever you're ready, just go ahead and stay up and find yourself in a mid-level position. I'm finding that when I come up here, the first thing my spine wants to do is a little bit of rotating and twisting. Let's see what's present for you. And do that a few times where you go down, you come up, you stay up in this mid-level place. Notice how it is that your body organized to sit and what movements your body would like to do. Eventually you're gonna come up to sit and stay in seated. We're gonna take our journey up to standing here. So if you practice somatic groundwork with me enough, you know that this means this is your time to start taking yourself level by level from the floor through a couple mid-level postures and eventually to your feet and rolling up to standing on your feet. Now we have time for this, so don't take this any faster than you need, there's no rush here. And instead keep, keep your awareness going of the effort that you're using in your body, the connection and support that you have not only from ground, but also from space. Yeah, noticing what ways your body wants to move as you come up. Again, the nature of somatic groundwork is self chiropractic, especially with the practice like today. So, just rolling up through your spine if it's possible for you, or just really being thoughtful about how you come up to your verticality allows for everything to organize itself in the best way. And once you get up to your feet, see if you need to walk a little bit, wiggle a little bit, swing a little bit, twist a little bit, bounce a little bit, especially bouncing if you're feeling a little bit lightheaded still when you come up, something to help you ground. Then taking a moment here for this final minute in practice together to come to your standing presence, to check in with you, how are ya? How does it feel to be here on the other side of doing some participating with your body, some self-caring of your inner spaces and your relationship with this wonderful place we get to inhabit.
And whatever goodness is here, whatever sparkles are here for you right now, may you carry these with you through the rest of your day, maybe even into the rest of your week. Thank you so much for practicing somatic groundwork with me. I love moving with you.